Hey chums and welcome back to the Kenwood Kids Club. As always, if you want to bake along with me today, don't forget you will find the full list of ingredients down in the video description. And of course, if you click on the link down there too, it will take you straight to the Kenwood Kids Club website where you will find the full written out recipe as well. If it is your first time watching along today, don't forget to hit that big red subscribe button and why not give this video a thumbs up as well so I know you're out there watching. Now I've really been looking forward to this week's recipe for a while now because it is one of my absolute favourite things to eat and I bet lots of you really love it too. We're going to be making a tear and share garlic bread and not just a garlic bread a cheesy garlic bread and I'm sure we'll all agree that cheesy garlic bread is by far and away the best kind of garlic bread. Now you don't need a lot to make this week's recipe, especially if like me you're cheating and you bought your bread. I've got a sourdough loaf here just because it's my favourite kind of bread but any crusty white bread will do and I'll tell you what you need to do with it in just a second. You're also going to need some parsley, and I've got some flat leaf parsley here. You're going to need some butter, you're going to need some garlic, and you're going to need some cheese, of course, because you can't make cheesy garlic bread without cheese. Now, I've got a mixture here of cheddar and mozzarella, but if you can only get one type, I'd highly recommend mozzarella because that's going to give you that lovely cheese pull when you pull apart your garlic bread. You know what I mean, where it goes all stringy. That's what you need. But yeah, so this is a blend. And then of course, just some seasoning, some salt and some pepper. But once you've got all of those ingredients assembled, we can get cracking on our pull apart cheesy garlic bread. Now I'm actually going to put my bread aside for one second because we're going to start off by making the garlic butter that is going to make this garlic bread have that super garlic taste. To make it, you're going to need a heat proof bowl that can go in the microwave. And into that bowl, you're going to start by adding 100 grams of butter. I'm using slightly salted butter, but you can use unsalted and add your own salt if you want. Or you could just use salted if you like a saltier butter. So that's going to go in there. And with it, I'm going to add in some parsley. Now, parsley is a fantastic herb that crops up in loads of different recipes. But we're going to take some and then we're going to chop it up into really small pieces. So I've got my chopping board here just to protect the worktop and I'm just going to gather some of this parsley together, get it nice and tight and then using a sharp knife and make sure you're careful whenever you're using a sharp knife, I'm going to put my fingers on top of the parsley with my nails pointing towards where the knife will be. That would just help make sure that if my knife does slip and go towards my fingers, my fingernails should protect me. And then I'm just going to chop gradually moving my fingers backwards so that I end up with really tiny pieces of this parsley. Now you only need about a tablespoon of parsley, so don't get too carried away and chop all of it. You can save the rest for another recipe. But once I've got it chopped up nice and small, I'm just going to grab that knife again and just chop through it a couple more times and that's just going to help make it really, really tiny. A sharp knife really helps here. So if you do have one, that's the one I would use. And then I can just scrape that into the bowl and all of this can go in there as well. Also in there, we're going to add some garlic and I really like garlic, so I'm going to use four cloves, but if you'd rather your garlic bread was slightly less garlicky, you can go down to three or even two if you'd prefer. I'm going to look for some good sized garlic cloves. I think maybe that one, that one, that one, and that one will do. So there's my four garlic cloves. And if you're using fresh garlic like me, it does have a skin on it. So you'll need to make sure that you take that skin off. If you're using something like garlic puree then that's fine, you can just pop it straight into the bowl. The easiest way to take the skin off your garlic cloves, making sure you're being careful, or you might want to ask an adult to do this bit for you, is take your knife, put it on top and then press down. What happens is it breaks that bulb of garlic apart a little bit, sorry, or that clove I should say, the bulb is the whole thing, and then you should find you can just peel off that dry skin and leave you 
with the inside part, which is the part that we want. So there's one. And if the dry bit at the bottom where the stalk is is still attached, you can use your knife to carefully chop that off. You might find your garlic will make your fingers smell really garlicky. And I remember reading a really good tip a few years ago that if you find you've got garlicky fingers, wash your hands with cold water first. Because if you use hot water, it can cook the smell into your skin. Now I don't know how true that is, but I've always done it and I do find it helps. So that's me passing on that tip to you now. Okay, so there's that last bit of dry skin coming off. And that leaves me, whoopsie, that leaves me with my four cloves of garlic. Now you've got a couple of options here. You can either use your knife to chop this up into really small pieces, or you can use a garlic crusher. Now a garlic crusher is a tool that looks like this, or yours might look a bit different, but it has a place where you can pop the garlic inside, and then a handle with a flat piece that when you squeeze it together, it pushes the garlic through these tiny holes and gives you really finely chopped garlic. So if you have one, by all means use it. If you don't, you can just chop it up with your knife. But if I squeeze this through, hopefully you'll see on the other camera, I get really tiny pieces of garlic. And then I can just use my knife to slide those off into the bowl. And I'm going to open it up again, pop in some more, and then give it another squeeze. And that's what's going to give me that really powerful garlicky flavour in my garlic bread. The last thing I'm going to add is a little bit more salt just a pinch, and some freshly ground black pepper. And then this is going to go into the microwave for about 30 seconds to start to melt that butter. And then we'll take it out, give it a stir, and pop it back in for another 30 seconds. So after that first 30 seconds, my butter has started to melt. So I'm going to give everything a really good stir around and then I'm going to pop it back in the microwave again. After that second 30 seconds, that butter is almost completely melted now and by giving it a quick stir, I can just melt that last little bit. And what I've now got is this lovely garlicky butter full of parsley that smells incredible. We can now pop this aside and turn our attention to that bread. So as I say, I just bought this one from the supermarket. It is a sourdough parve, pave, parve. It's a sourdough loaf. I'm going to unwrap it and you'll see that this one is actually a square shape. Now it doesn't have to be a square shape. You can use any type of crusty white bread as I said earlier on. But what I'm going to do is turn it. So for me, I'm going to cut this along that diagonal. And that way it will give me lots of different sized pieces of garlic bread for people to enjoy. So using a very sharp serrated knife this time, and again, your adult might need to do this bit for you. I'm going to start cutting through that bread, but I'm not going to cut all the way through. So hopefully you can see I've left it still attached at the bottom. I'm going to do that all the way across. Once you've done that, you should end up with something that looks like this. Now, because I don't want those middle slices to be absolutely enormous, I'm then just going to take my knife one more time and I'm going to do a cut in the opposite direction, just one, so that then, when I want to serve this up, once it's cooked, I'll just be able to tear these pieces off. So now I have all of those cuts in one direction and one cut in the other. And now this is the fun bit. I'm going to grab that garlic butter back, give it another quick stir, and then we're going to start pouring it into those cuts that we made. So I'm gonna start in the middle, and I'm just going to pour this garlic butter in between the two slices. 
Don't worry if you make a mess and you spill it over the outside of the bread as well because with any leftover garlic butter, we're actually going to brush it all over the outside. So it really doesn't matter if you make a bit of a mess of the outside of it. When you've put some garlic butter between each of those cuts, what we're then going to do is bring in our cheese. And this time you're going to open up those cuts and you're just going to put a little bit of cheese in between each one. It can be quite fiddly doing this, but I promise you the effort will be worth it. If you have any leftover cheese, don't forget we've got that big cut going the opposite direction as well. So if you can get in there and pop a little bit extra in, then do that too. And then your last job is to just take the rest of that garlic butter and drizzle it over the surface of your garlic bread. If you have one, you can use a pastry brush like this to just brush that butter that we've just spooned over the top around a bit more just so that garlic flavour covers as much of the bread as possible. Once you get to this stage, grab yourself a baking sheet and I've just popped a bit of baking paper on top of mine and then I'm going to grab some kitchen foil. You want quite a big piece because we're going to use this to wrap up our bread. So I'm going to place that across that baking sheet and then I'm going to transfer this cheesy garlic bread over onto that foil. I've made quite a lot of mess but that's okay because I'm just going to sprinkle all of these leftover ingredients on the top. So we've got some garlic, we've got some cheese, and it's all going on top. Then I can move this out of the way, and I'll slide this over so you can have a better look. And then I'm just going to use this foil to wrap up my bread, make sure all of it is completely covered, and I'm going to bake this in a preheated oven at 180 degrees, which is 160 degrees fan or gas mark four for 20 minutes. Now in that 20 minutes, all of that cheese is going to melt, that butter is going to bubble up through that bread and make it really buttery and garlicky and delicious. And then after that 20 minutes, we're going to take it out and uncover it before cooking it for a little bit longer, just to allow that cheese to kind of go a bit golden and that bread to go nice and crusty. So I'm going to pop this in the oven and I will see you in 20 minutes when it's time to uncover it. Be back soon. Okay, so it's been about 20 minutes and it's now time to uncover this loaf very carefully because this will be super hot. In fact, you might want to get your adult to do this for you. But you should find that it's now looking really, really melty. So, I need to turn this around so you can see it properly. Can you see all that melted cheese that's pulling away? Doesn't it look amazing? So, I'm not going to tear the tin foil off because I can just tuck it around the sides and then this is going to go back in that oven, this time uncovered for around about five to 10 minutes until it's all crisped over on the top and it will make our garlic bread really crispy and crunchy. So I'm gonna pop this back in and just like before, I will see you in about five to 10 minutes. And after just another five to 10 minutes in the oven, can you see that the cheese has started to kind of go brown on the top the bread has got a nice crispiness to it, and I wish you could smell this because it smells absolutely incredible. It's buttery, garlicky, cheesy, bready, all the best things in the whole world in one dish. And the great thing about this is there are so many ways you can adapt it as well. So. If you wanted, you could add some tomato to the sauce to make it more of a kind of garlic pizza bread. And you can serve this with so many different things. It's great to just add to a barbecue, on the side of a pasta dish, pizza night, just anything. Well, let's be honest, everything is better with cheesy garlic bread. Now, to chop this up, I'm going to transfer it. This is still very hot. 
So we're being very careful. I'm going to transfer it back onto my chopping board, which I have cleaned. And you can either literally just pull pieces off. Look at that cheese pull, like this. Or you can use your knife to cut it back into those neat slices again. But of course, as is always the case in these videos, we have to give this a try. It's so good. Mm. I do hope that you will have a go at this. Am I calling it a pull apart cheesy garlic bread or a tear and share? You can decide. Pull apart, tear and share, cheesy garlic bread. It is absolutely delicious. I promise you, you will absolutely love it. So please do give it a try. As I said at the start of the video, if you head down to the description, sorry. I'm still just like tasting garlicky cheesiness. If you head down to the video description, you will find the full list of ingredients that you will need to make one of your own or why not click on the link that will take you to the Kenwood Kids Club website where you'll also find the full written out recipe as well. If you do have a go at it, don't forget to take a photo and share it with us over on the Kenwood Kids Club website because who knows, we could be announcing you as our star baker of the month for July and that could scoop you up your very own Kenwood hand mixer and your very own Kenwood Kids Club goodie bag as well. I'm now going to go and eat probably a lot of this so I'm going to end this video here as always thank you so much for watching and don't forget we'll be back at the same time next week with another cook along or bake along video and in fact it's the turn of one of our junior ambassadors again so it's not one you'll want to miss I'll be back the week after but as always until then take care and happy baking bye